All right, in this lesson, we are gonna learn how to name organic compounds. And it turns out that there is a group of people who have way too much time on their hands and they dedicate themselves to naming organic compounds because they know, as silly as it seems, it's very important that we have a consistent, systematic way of providing an English name for any compound that you can draw on paper. So from this point forward, we're gonna use exclusively bond line drawings to represent organic compounds. And then after we draw the bond line drawing, we should be able to provide a chemical name. And so the group that comes up with these standards of naming is called IUPAC. I don't know what it stands for. You can look it up online. It's some international something or another naming of compounds. I don't, I don't know, it's, it's a funky name. But they are who are in charge of coming up with the systematic way of naming compounds. And so the first types of compounds that we're gonna learn how to name are called alkanes. Alkanes are the simplest type of organic compound that you can encounter in organic chemistry. And by the way, this whole handout, this organic nomenclature guide is available for download. So look right down there and download this so you can follow along with me. Uh, you could also copy this down into a new piece of paper if you wanted to. And so alkanes are the simplest and they contain only carbon and hydrogen atoms and they only have single bonds. So this is very plain. There's no double or triple bonds. There's no oxygens. There's just carbon and hydrogen and single bonds, the simplest case scenario. Uh, alkanes are named with the ending ane, which is standing for alkane. And there are two flavors of alkanes that you can have. You can have straight alkanes that are just like an open line. <coughs> Excuse me. And those are called straight chain alkanes. Or you can have cyclic alkanes, which are rings, which is a, a just carbon and hydrogen, but they are arranged in a ring so that the two ends are tied together. And so depending on the number of carbons in your alkane, the name will change. So here are the names for one through 10, and these are the only ones that I would expect you to know for this class. So if it has one carbon, it's called methane, two carbons, ethane, three, propane, and so on and so forth. You can see the names here. And then, if you have a ring, you just add the prefix cyclo in front to show that it is a ring. So for example, uh, if you have a triangle that's three carbons in a ring, you would call that cyclopropane because the name of the straight chain alkane with three carbons is propane. Obviously, you cannot have any smaller than cyclopropane. It would be impossible to have cycloethane because with only two carbons, you cannot make a ring. You need a minimum of three carbons to make a, a ring. You could have cyclobutane, cycloheptane, and actually one of the most common, you'll see this a lot, is the cyclohexane. We'll talk about this a little bit later on, but the cyclohexane is very, very stable. You've probably seen in nature that the hexagon is very common. You've got things like the honeycomb, and other nat naturally occurring structural elements have this hexagon shape. And that is because the hexagon is very stable and that is true even at the molecular level. So we'll talk about why cyclohexanes are one of the most popular type of cyclic alkane. Now, uh, let's just take a look at an example before we look at some more complicated cases. So I'm just gonna flip to the next page. Let me see if I can actually do that. Oh this okay uh, so let's just take a look at an example so why don't I draw a, a compound and we can try and name it so we'll call this example one okay so there's our first example what would the name the IUPAC name of this compound be well we can see that it's very clearly it's an alkane uh, you know it's an alkane when you don't see any double or triple bonds and you don't see anything but carbons and hydrogen and then we'll just count the carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is six carbons. It's a straight chain alkane because it's not in a ring. So we'll look back at our list of names and we can see here that if you have six carbons and it's a straight chain alkane, we call that hexane. So we go back to our molecule here and we would say that that is equal to hexane. Okay, so this is really easy, but this gets harder and it gets fun, okay? This gets really fun because let's take a look at another example of a molecule that I could draw. 
and you're gonna see it gets a little it gets fun you'll see so let's do the same thing I'm just gonna draw hexane again okay so there's hexane again but I'm gonna make a little change I'm gonna add a carbon coming off of the hexane this is what we call a branched alkane And it turns out that we need a special way of naming this compound. You might think, oh, we'll just count the carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, there's seven carbons. This is heptane, based on our list for seven carbons, but that is false. After all, we would need some way to indicate where the branching occurs. And if we just say heptane, that doesn't transfer that information. So how do we name branched alkanes? Well, the good news is, it's similar to naming regular alkanes, but there's a twist. So let's go back to our uh, nomenclature handout and see what to do in the case of branched alkanes. So here are the steps for naming branched alkanes, and we have to follow the steps. There are nine steps, but oftentimes you don't have to use all of them. So step one says, find and name the longest carbon chain, and we're gonna call that the parent chain. So let's go back to our example here, and we just need to find the longest carbon chain. So can you see where the longest chain is? Should we, we can check a, a bunch of different possibilities. Maybe the longest chain actually starts off our branch. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we have a chain that's five long. Can you find a longer chain? Yes, we can find a chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. There is a chain that is six carbons long. That is going to be our parent chain. So when we go ahead and start writing the name, we're gonna write the name of the parent chain, which is hexane, since it has six carbons, but we are not done. Let's go back and take a look at rule number two. So our step two in our naming branched out gains. Step two says, number the parent chain starting from the end that's nearest to a substituent. Okay, that doesn't sound too bad. So we'll number our chain starting from the side that's nearest to the substituent. So we could either start counting from this end, or we could start counting from this end. Which end is nearer to the substituent? And remember, this guy here is a substituent. The right side is. So we'll number our chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so now we can see that our branch, or our substituent, is coming off of position number three. That's gonna be important for our name. Step three. Name each substituent, also called a side chain, and indicate its location by the number of the parent chain carbon it's attached to. Alkane substituents are indicated by the suffix il and the bolded prefix from the table above. For example, butyl. Okay, so what is our substituent here? You can see our substituent is an alkane and it has one carbon. So coming off of the three position, there is one carbon here. So that is a methane group. But because it's a substituent, we don't call it methane. Instead, we'll call it methyl with a YL, methyl. So this would be called 3-methyl hexane. And so that is the name of this compound, 3-methyl hexane. Now it turns out that we are done. There is uh, no more naming that we need to do. We don't need to follow the rest of the steps because we've um, completely named the compound. You can see some of the other steps have to do with more special scenarios. So for example, when there's more than one substituent or if there's identical substituents, we don't have this sort of situation. If there's a tie for the longest chain, we, these are all special cases for steps four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we only needed to go to step three to name this branched out game. Let's take a look at another example. I love this. I think this is a lot of fun, but I have a pretty twisted sense of fun. I'm extremely nerdy. Okay, let's let's do another example here. Okay, I've got a few examples for us to try today, and that's going to be all for today. We're just going to do a bunch of examples. Okay, how about this compound here? So remember, step one is that we would like to find the longest chain. So you want to count out a bunch of possibilities and see if we can find the longest chain. Let's start counting. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we've got a seven. That's pretty long. 
Let's try one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Aha, we do have an eight, so that's longer than seven. How about one, two, three, four, five, six? Now that's not very long. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that's the same of our second chain that we drew, but just going the opposite direction. So we found our longest chain, it's this guy here. Now, which side should we start numbering from? Should we set this side equal to one or this side equal to one? Which side should we set equal to one? Remember, we wanna start numbering such that the substituent or side chain gets a lower number. So if we start numbering from this side, one, two, three, four, five, the substituent is coming off of the five position. If we number the other way, one, two, three, four, aha, the substituent will come off the four position. So we should start numbering from the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, what do we call a alkane with eight carbons? That is called an octane. So we'll just write that down now, octane. And now we need to deal with naming the substituent. We have a substituent coming off of the four position and it is two carbons, one and two. So we call that ethane, but because it's a substituent, we change the ending from ane to il, Y-L, so that the name becomes four ethyl octane. And it should all be one word, this is not a space. 4-ethyl octane, 3-methyl hexane. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, should we increase the difficulty? I'm so glad you asked. Okay, let's increase the difficulty and do a harder one still. Aren't these just great? Okay, why don't we try having multiple substituents? So right now we've all of these examples, two and three, have just had one substituent. Let's try adding a second substituent. Okay, can we come up with the name for this guy? Okay, step one's always the same. Find the parent chain, find the longest chain. And I think I see the longest chain right now. Do you see it? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Ooh, 10, that is our longest chain. So this is gonna be called a decane. And let's start numbering our chain. How should we start numbering our chain? Well, we need to start numbering such that the first substituent gets the lowest number. And I can see that if I start numbering this way, one, two, three, four, five, we will get a substituent off the five position. But if we start numbering this way, one, two, three, we can get our first substituent at the three position, so that's better. So here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, now we have two substituents we have at the three position a methyl group and at the six position we have an ethyl group so we have three methyl and six ethyl now it turns out that they're in the name we need to list them in the right order and so when i was first learning this i always thought okay we will list it three first and then six because three comes before six right wrong you actually number them, alpha, you actually list them alphabetically. So E for ethyl comes before M for methyl. So actually the correct order for this compound's name would be 6-ethyl-3-methyl. I see I've run out of room, so I'm gonna just move this around. Decking. So we had multiple substituents and we listed each substituent with the right number, but we listed them in order of alphabetical nature. And we went in alphabetical order. And that is also shown on our rules list here. So if you look at our rules list, it says, when there's more than one substituent, order non-identical substituents alphabetically. And that's exactly what we did there, okay? Shall we do another one? Absolutely, we will do another one, okay. So we've seen examples one, two, three, and four. And by the way, there's tons of practice on this on problem set one. So if you wanna go ahead and get started and try naming these kind of compounds on your own, it's a blast. Start problem set one. Uh, let's do example number five. 
Okay, uh, let's try this. That's a little too crazy. Let's do this. Okay. Let's find the longest chain. I see one, two, three, four, five. That's pretty good, five. One, two, three, four. That's only four. One, two, three, four. That's also only four. One, two, three, four, five. There's another five chain. So if you have multiple five chains, you'll see that actually it won't matter which one you pick, that you'll get the same name for this compound anyway. We'll talk about a scenario later where that may not be the case, but for this compound, as long as you pick the five chain, you're gonna have the same name no matter which one you choose. And so let's start numbering. Uh, we can either start numbering this side as one or this side as one. Turns out again, it does not matter. Uh, either way, if you start numbering from the left, the first substituent's gonna be at the two position. And if you start numbering from the right, the first substituent's gonna be at the uh, two position also. So let's just number left to right. Okay, and what we can see here is we have quite a few substituents here. We have a methyl substituent at two, we have two methyl substituents at three, and we have a methyl substituent at four. So we, in total, we have four methyl substituents. How do we deal with this? We just list all the numbers first and then say methyl. That will help us. So we have a methyl at two, we have a methyl at three. We have another methyl at three, so we do three comma three. Comma, we have another methyl at four, so two comma comma, two comma three comma three comma four. And then now instead of just saying methyl, we'll say tetramethyl. The prefix tetra means four. So just so you know the, the prefixes, you have di for two, tri for three, tetra for four, penta for five, and so on and so forth. You have hexa for six, and I don't think you'll see anything beyond hexa in this class. And then what's the parent chain? It was five carbons long, so that is gonna be pentane. And so that's the name of this compound, 2, 3, 3, 4, tetramethylpentane. And that is accounted for in our handout, and it's uh, rule number five, identical substituents require prefixes. Right, let's take a look at another example here. Example six, let's do this one here. All right, so let's try and find that long parent chain. I think I see it here, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's a six chain there. Let's see, there's also a one, two, three, four, five, six. There's also a six chain there. Oh, interesting. So we've got two six chains and they are not equivalent like the previous one. You know, in the previous one here, it didn't matter if this was our five chain because the name would have been the same. But you can see here, if we name this six chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, that is gonna have two substituents coming off, one at the three position and one at the four position versus if we name, name it this as the longest chain, there's gonna be three substituents, one at the two position, one at the three position, and one at the four position. So we have a situation is that there is a tie for the longest parent chain. And so the rule, and this is surprising to me, you want to pick the parent chain that has the most substituents. So you would not pick this parent chain because it has only two substituents. But if you pick this sub parent chain, it has three substituents. Okay, now, if we're going to pick this parent chain, which way do we want to start numbering? Do we want to start numbering at the top or do we want to start numbering at the bottom? Well, it turns out we'll want to start numbering at the bottom because the first substituent is going to be a two versus if we start numbering from the top, the first substituent will be a three. So we should number from the bottom up. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we can just start listing out our substituents. We have a two methyl. 
we have a 3-ethyl, and we have a 4-methyl. All right, so this is a hexane, because the longest chain is 6, so we'll just end that off with hexane. And so remember, we're going to list this in alphabetical order. So first comes the 3-ethyl. And now we have two identical substituents. We have a methyl at 2 and a methyl at 4. So we'll say 2, comma 4, di, I'm running out of room, dimethyl hexane. And that's the name of this compound, 3-ethyl. 2,4-dimethyl hexane. Um, okay, let's take a look at another example. I can keep coming up with examples. The practice is so good. How about this one here? There's a bromine in this one, okay? I'll put that there. Okay, so let's go ahead and try and find the longest chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's pretty long, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, nope, that's only six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, that's another seven going the other way. Uh, which way should we start numbering? We want to number in the direction that gives the first substituent the lowest number. So we should number from left to right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, let's take a look now. We have some interesting substituents here that I'm not quite sure had a name. At the 3 position, we have a bromine. And at the 4 position, we have a very complicated looking substituent. Uh, it's not just it's like a branch into another branch. So how do we deal with that? So let's take a look at our guide to help us here. Okay, so first things first, we'll notice that there are some special substituents that have unique names because they're very common. We have the isopropyl substituent, which looks kind of like a peace sign. And then we have the tert butyl substituent, which to me looks kind of like a pitchfork or a broom, okay? So as you can see in our example that we're drawing here, we have one of these special substituents. Which one do we have? It's the one that looks like a pitchfork. It's the tert butyl group. Looks like a broom, okay? So we have, and then we also have the bromine. How do we name the bromine? That's also on our handout, but that one you have to look on the second page. And it says that uh, if you have a halogen like bromine, you call that bromo. So the name of the substituent is bromo. So let's go back here and try and name this guy. So we have at the four position, we have a tert butyl. And at the three position, we have a bromine. So bromo. Okay, now it turns out Remember that we have to list these in alphabetical order. The tert of tert butyl is not counted in the alphabetical order. So we actually just count it as bu. So do not include the tert in your alphabetization. So what comes first alphabetically? Butyl or bromo? Well, bromo comes before butyl. So we would name this 3-bromo. Four tert butyl, and then the parent chain is seven, so that's heptane. All right, that's a good one. Okay, shall we do a super hard one? I think we should do a super hard one. By the way, this was example seven. Let's do a super hard one, and then it's really important that you come to the live meeting so that we can do some of this practice live, one-on-one. -on -one. I can give you more examples. We can work on these. I just want to give you a taste for this. Okay, let's take a look at example eight. Okay, how hard could I make this? I can make it pretty hard. Let's try this.
put an iodine there. Okay, that's a pretty crazy one. So first order of business is find the longest chain. So let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, we have a nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, we have another nine. Okay, so, so we have two possible uh, chains that we need to consider. Let me highlight them. So chain number one, I'll highlight that in yellow, and that's nine long. And then we have chain number two, which is also nine, which I'll highlight in pink. Okay, so focus first on the yellow one. How many substituents do we have coming off of our yellow chain? Sorry, that's a really bad job. How many substituents do we have coming off of our yellow chain? So when I look at this, I see we have the iodine, that's one. Then beneath that, we have something coming off. And then beneath that, we have something coming off. So I see three substituents off of this yellow chain. Now let's try the purple chain. How many substituents do we come off the purple chain? We have a lot. We have five substituents now. We have one, two at the bottom. Then we have three, four, and five. So with the purple option, we have five substituents. And with the yellow option, we have three substituents. So which one will we choose? We'll choose the one with the most substituents. So that's gonna be the purple, the pink color. Okay, so now let's number, and we do want a number such that the first substituents get the lowest number. So that's gonna be starting from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. All right, and now we can start listing out our substituents. I kind of like to list them out ahead of time and just so that I know how to then organize them in the name. So we have at the two position, we have methyls. So we have a two methyl. We have another two methyl. There's two methyls coming off of the two position. At the three position, we have an ethyl. Right, that's this guy right here. At the four position, we have a one, two, three, that's a propyl. And then at the five position, we have an iodine. That is an iodo. Okay, so now which one comes first alphabetically? The order is going to be first comes ethyl, then comes iodo. I comes next. Then is going to come M for methyl. So these two will be three. And then propyl is going to be number four. All right, let's go ahead and name this guy. So we'll start off with our ethyl. Three ethyl and remember just put a hyphen in between each new substituent then comes iodo so five iodo remember we're listing in alphabetical order not by order of number then comes the two methyl groups so we'll name that two comma two dimethyl and then finally we do have a propyl Four, propyl and then the longest chain was nine so that's called no name so no name and that's the name okay one last type of compound that we'd like to name are called alcohols Okay, and what are alcohols? Alcohols are alkanes. That's what the alk in alcohols means. It's alkane. Plus, we have an OH group. OH group is called a hydroxy group. And it turns an alkane into an alcohol.
Alkanes end in ane, but alcohols end in all. So let's take a look at an example. So all we have to do is count and number the carbons. So the longest carbon chain is one, two, three. So this is a propane. And we should number this propane, giving the substituent the lowest number. So we should number it like this, one, two, three. So the name of this compound is going to be prop one all, which means it's propane, but it's an alcohol because it has an OH group. So prop one all, or you can just call it one propanol. Let's do another example here. This one here. Again, we'll find the longest carbon chain, which is down here. It's three again. So one, two, three. Now this one is prop two all. Because the alcohol group, the OH group, is at the two position. Or you could also call this two propanol. By the way, this is rubbing alcohol. also called isopropanol. All right, let's do another one. Let's try this guy. This one has a chlorine and an alcohol. We'll number the longest carbon chain one, two, three, four, five. And now uh, what you can see is that there's a interesting issue here, which is that we can number such that the alcohol has the lower number, or we can number such that the chlorine has the lower number. Always prioritize the alcohol. So meaning that we should number like this, one, two, three, four, five. So the name of this compound would be four chloro, to pentanol or for chloro to pent to all. Take a look at another example. Now for this compound, you can see that the longest parent chain does not include the alcohol group. That's a problem. So for example, you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's an eight long chain, but we could that doesn't include the alcohol. The alcohol is not connected to any of those eight carbons. That's a problem. So when you have an alcohol, the parent chain must connect to the alcohol. For naming purposes. So even though this is the longest chain, we would not use it in our naming. Instead, we should use this chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, even though it's only six long, because that is the longest chain that also includes a connection, direct connection to the OH group. So parent chain must contain OH. So we'll number this one, two, three, four, five, and six. And what we can see is that we have a propyl substituent coming off of the two position. So we'll name this two propyl, one hexanol to show that the alcohol is attached to the one position. All right, let's try another one. Now in all these examples so far, 
I have given you the structure and you've given me the name, but what if I give you the name and ask you to draw the structure? Let's try that. So let's do draw four five dimethyl three heptanol. Okay, so the first thing you'll want to do is draw the parent chain, which in this case is heptane. So we'll just draw seven carbons in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's heptane. And now we can number this. Number it any way you want. Okay. At the three position, we have our alcohol. Put my alcohol there. And then at the four and the five position, we have methyl groups. So I'll put a methyl group at four and a methyl group at five. And there we go. So it's actually really easy if I give you the name to draw the picture because you can kind of draw it in any orientation you want. Not too bad, right? All right, let's take a look at one more example. Draw this one. Again, we'll look at the parent chain. We see it's a butane. Parent chain's always gonna be at the end, so butane. So that's four carbons. And then we'll number it, one, two, three, four. Doesn't really matter how you number it. And then at the three position, we have two bromines. So BR, BR. And then let's see, we have at the two position, a methyl group. And then at the two position, we also have a all, so the alcohol's there as well. And so that is our 3,3-dibromo-2-methyl-butanol, butan-2-all, I should say. Great. Just a little bit more I want to talk about, and that is the different varieties of alcohols that exist. So let's take a look at this alcohol and compare that to this alcohol. Okay, four different types of alcohols here. And what I want to do is on each of these alcohols, I'm going to label the carbon that's attached to the alcohol as alpha carbon. So I'm gonna put a little blue Greek letter alpha next to the OH group. Okay, so I put a little Greek alpha next to every OH group. Now, I wanna label the carbons that are connected to the blue carbon, alpha, as beta. So in the first alcohol, we have only one beta carbon. There's only one carbon attached to the alpha position. But in the second alcohol, there are two betas. We have beta on the left and beta on the right. For the third alcohol, we have three betas. We have this beta, this beta, this one too. And then finally for the last alcohol, that one is special in that there is no beta at all. It's just one carbon in the entire molecule. So we can't label anything beta. So this first alcohol is called 1-propanol. We already named this one. And this is called a primary alcohol. The one degrees symbol is pronounced primary. The second alcohol, because it has two betas, is called a secondary alcohol. Again, the, the name secondary coming from the fact that there are two beta carbons. The name of this compound, by the way, would be 3-pentanol. 
Our third alcohol here would be called a tertiary alcohol. Because it has three beta carbons, and this is called 2 methyl 2 propanol. And then finally, this poor alcohol all the way on the right is just called methanol. It's a special alcohol in that it's the only alcohol that is um, having only one carbon. It's the simplest alcohol, methanol. Okay, so we should keep that in mind when naming alcohols that we, I may also ask you what type of alcohol is it? Is it primary, secondary, or tertiary? Okay, last thing I wanna mention in this lesson is cyclic alcohols. Or let's not, let's not add the difficulty of alcohols. Let's just say naming cyclic alkanes. We don't need to worry about naming cyclic alcohols. You can, I'll give you an example, you can try it. But if you recall, if you have a, a ring of carbons, we just add the prefix cyclo in front. So this would be cyclopentane. If we add to our cyclopentane a methyl group, then we'll just call this methyl cyclopentane. We don't need a number because it doesn't actually matter where the methyl group is because that's not going to change the compound. It would just be rotated a little bit differently. So it's the same compound. It doesn't matter if the methyl group is here or if the methyl group is here. It's still just methyl cyclopentane. But if we start having two substituents on the ring, then the numbering is important. So this is a cyclopentane with two methyl groups on it. So we would call this 1,2-dimethyl cyclopentane. And let's just do one, one, uh, one more for fun. Okay, so this, has, this is a cyclopentane with two methyl groups, both on the same position. So this would be 1,1-dimethyl cyclopropane. All right. So now you should be able to name pretty much any compound I can come up with, but it's time to do lots of practice now. So come join me in the live meeting and start working on problem set one. There's tons of naming pro practice, and if you encounter maybe you're getting a problem, you're having trouble, you're getting stuck, then that's when you can come and see me and I can give you some help. All right, but that's it for today. Bye for now.